Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Jeremy Holton, the Communications Director at the ALS Association and the co-host of the Connecting ALS podcast. I'm joined today by Kathy Cummings, Executive Director of the International Alliance of ALS MND Associations. Kathy, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. We're here uh, on uh, International MND Awareness Day. Um, uh, so we'll get to that in a minute, but first, can you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself, your connection to ALS, and how you got involved in the Alliance? Absolutely. Um, I have a number of different uh, connections to ALS. Uh, I've had a few uh, friends who have passed from ALS and friends, parents, and so on, but obviously the closest connection to me is uh, that my mother, Betty, passed away from ALS in 2005. She was diagnosed in 2000, uh, and as I said, passed away in 2005. She was uh, ball bar onset uh, ALS, and uh, therefore, uh, you know, lost her ability to communicate fairly early in the process. I um, have three kids myself, and my parents' youngest grandchildren are the, the kids in my family. Uh, and so when uh, my mother lost the ability to communicate um, uh, using her own words, um, she switched to using a whiteboard, writing on a whiteboard. Uh, but two of my three kids were below reading age at that point. So um, it was very um, hard for me to see my kids not be able to communicate with their grandmother who obviously cared for them very much. Uh, and so that is my um, close connection to ALS MND. In terms of involvement with the International Alliance of ALS MND, um, I got involved after my mother passed with uh, the board of directors of ALS Ontario and ALS Canada, two different organizations. And uh, I completed my board term with uh, those organizations in 2013, uh, but stayed in close contact with the organizations. And uh, I've always worked in the not-for-profit sector. And uh, when I heard about the opportunity to lead the uh, International Alliance of ALS MND Associations as its executive director, I, I jumped at the opportunity um, to marry my professional side of working in associations with my personal side of having um, ALS being very near and dear to my heart because of my mom. Wow. Yeah, so much uh, work that you've put into this fight and, and you know, so meaningful, uh, everything that you've done over the years for, for the cause. Uh, what can you tell us about the Alliance for, for people tuning in who may not be familiar with the International Alliance? Um, tell me a little bit about how it works, its mission, and, and how it goes about uh, trying to achieve that mission. Absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, the Alliance is an interesting organization because it is an organization of organizations. It's mm -hmm. not individual people who are members in most cases. It is, um, you know, global um, or sorry, uh, national and local entities that form the global uh, alliance. So we have members from uh, many countries around the world. So, for example, you know, Argentina, Spain, England, uh, Ireland, the United States, of course, and Canada. And so most of the globe, um, each of the organizations that cover their national territory uh, become uh, part of the alliance and form the international alliance. We have some more local associations that are part of uh, the Alliance as well. And our, our mission really is to help our organizational members serve the ALS m and community directly. So we really are all about uh, being a global gateway of information, like really curating information, connecting people to other people or organizations to other organizations and um, really helping with breaking down silos and making sure that we're not duplicating effort. And as I said before, really being that global gateway of information. Yeah, you talk about breaking down silos and, you know, there's been so much talk in, in recent decades about globalization, breaking down walls. Talk to me a little bit about resource disparities uh, from country to country, from region to region, and, and, and what the challenges that creates for different organizations and the opportunities potentially to, um, to, to kind of address some of those disparities. 
I'm going to turn your question a little bit on your on its head mm. and just say I would encourage people if they're listening to this to take a minute to go to our website um, to look at the fundamental rights of people living with ALS and the fundamental rights of caregivers. Those are two documents that have been developed by the Alliance um, uh, for about 20 years now, the, the uh, fundamental rights of people living with ALS. And um, this year we, we um, launched the fundamental rights of caregivers. And the reason I point to that before answering your question is we're, we're aspirational about the fact that we would like the whole world to have the best quality of care the best access to treatments, the best quality of life possible while living with ALS or MND. And from a caregiver perspective, we want caregivers to have access to respite, to remuneration if possible through uh, their governments or um, other payer systems and so on. So that doesn't cover all the rights, but we're very aspirational at the International Alliance to ensure that everybody has the best quality um, that they can in terms of quality of life, quality of care, quality of treatment, and quality of support um, for mental health, psychological, uh, and respite, as I said. So um, there is, um, that is definitely an aspiration though. Um, and going back to your original question, one of the things that we see at the global level is that it isn't equal around the world. Um, in, if you look at things like regulatory pathways, uh, you know there are differences between the way that Health Canada approves something or the FDA or the EMA uh, in Europe and you know any other uh, countries around the world. So regulatory pathways are different, access to treatments is different, access to clinical trials is different. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we, work tirelessly towards is to try and coordinate and collaborate as much as we can so that access becomes more equal uh, for the whole globe. Access to healthcare is certainly a big part of the conversation. Last year during the uh, global pandemic, uh, what were you hearing from member organizations in terms of how they responded to the COVID crisis uh, and, and where they go now that things in certain parts of the world are starting to open up, obviously there's still some disparities there, but what was the impact of the COVID pandemic on the global fight against ALS and MND? Um, there, were, there were quite a few impacts, I would say, um, globally uh, from the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, but we really adopted the phrase, ALS doesn't stop, so neither will we. Uh, so there are a number of different things that happened from both a care and a research side um, that uh, were impacted in terms of not being able to collect real-time data from uh, clinical trial participants, for example. But in terms of, of those impacts, you know, from a what I'll call a negative point of view, there were also some silver linings that emerged out of the pandemic. And um, the biggest one, I think, is one we just did a webinar on last week um, that's available in archive. People can click on our website and watch it. And that is telemedicine or telehealth. Sure. Um, for, for a long time, this community has been asking for um, more access to telehealth so that they don't have to go to clinic on a regular basis or they don't have to go to physically to a support group because as you can imagine as the as the disease progresses it's harder and harder uh, in terms of transportation to satisfy the requirements of, of getting to different places so um, for us telehealth has been a real silver lining and um, it's not appropriate for every single circumstance, but it is appropriate for a lot of circumstances. And um, we're really hoping that that sticks, if you will, uh, from the pandemic. It's something we've, we've heard a lot in some of our conversations, uh, you know, that, we, that we've been able to have with the community. Uh, Monday is uh, Global ALS MND Awareness Day. What's in store? How can people get involved? What can people watching do to help spread the word? Uh, really, social media, I think, is the best uh, answer to that question, and that is, you know, share um, many of the things that our member organizations are doing in terms of, you know, their awareness campaigns, 
Uh, we've been lucky this year to have a couple of big awareness campaigns around the world that have happened um, really close to Global Awareness Day, including Lou Gehrig Day, which just happened in uh, North America uh, earlier this month. Uh, but anything you can do to spread the word and create awareness, because ALS isn't a very well-known disease, uh, and uh, until you are impacted by it directly, often uh, people uh, don't understand, you know, how devastating this, this disease can be. So anything anyone can do to share, to raise awareness, um, and um, to raise awareness of those fundamental rights documents as well of, um, you know, what we think or what we aspire to for people living with ALS and their caregivers. Kathy Cummings is the executive director of the International Alliance of ALS MND Associations. Kathy, so thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.